All right, here is a video review for a new legacy figure that I'm super excited about and honestly is one that I didn't think we were ever going to get. It is G2 Universe G-Axis. He was uh, kind of the main villain in, uh, well, I guess, I mean, he, he was a big bad guy, a big Decepticon bad guy in the Generation 2 comic. And we've gotten a couple of other figures named G-Axis uh, in toy lines in the past. I, I think the first one was like, an orange repaint of Beast Machine's Jetstorm, the deluxe Beast Machine's Jetstorm. And then there was, a, I know there was another repaint that was uh, an orange and gray repaint of uh, G2 Armada, or not G2, Armada Starscream. Uh, but this is the first time we've got him in his official, what, what I consider his official look, uh, his G2 look. Although his alt mode here is more streamlined, more jet-like. Uh, in, the, in the comic, he was kind of a, space boat he was the, these colors but imagine them on like scourge but with bat wings and he, even his bat wings are a little they were more like the lower wings like this than this kind of structured wing but it's still g-axis and it's still cool that we got him and honestly this makes a little bit more with the exception of the arms just hanging off the bottom here uh the basic design looks a little bit more streamlined and aerodynamic than he did in the comic so i'm fine with that but yeah just to have him represented as his self, himself, itself, um, in his proper form versus just a, a straight up repaint. I'm curious if they're going to remold, repaint him into something else, but I don't care because we got G axis. So, anyway, here he is in his jet mode, and he's a little different like the from the instructions. The instructions have you, uh, like this can tab on, have this gun pegged up under here, but one, that just, I feel like it just adds too much bulk to the front of his jet mode. Like, even this gun. He comes with two guns, a small gun and a larger gun. In the comic, he wielded two guns, but I thought they were more, they were more comparable in size to each other. They may have been these designs, but they were similar in size. There wasn't just this really skinny gun. And this seems like it's more of a piece to, a separate peg piece to allow the gun to peg onto his back. But we'll get to that. Uh, later on, but you can put that under there. I think you could you could leave this one in an accessory bin or something and be fine. Um, also, my friend Foster pointed out that uh, the uh, little targeting thing from his shoulder just pegs in, and you can unpeg that and peg it into the back of the gun, and you can plug it up here, and that gives him a little bit more like his alt mode in the comics had a kind of extension up here, and I think that looks a little better putting the gun uh, up here in the back of the alt mode versus extending the red nose even further out. You can also, like these little wing flaps from his legs, fold under, that works. But you can, if you want, you can flip them under. That just kind of looks like some support struts for the wings. Either way, it's up to you. Um, the instructions have those tucked in under there, though. But yeah, that's a nice little jet. Again, the, the benefit of the hands is it does make them easy to hold and very easy to swoosh around, which is nice. Um, but it does kind of give him like a little cargo pod or something underneath that he doesn't necessarily need. A little hollow up in here, but I mean, I mean nobody's looking at it for, for this angle. Also, you can turn his head around <laughs> so it's not, if you look closely, his face is just sticking out, peeping out his window here. Which is funny, and I like it. Um, you can turn that head around and uh, so it's not super visible as his face poking through his cockpit. Transformation, just remove the guns. We'll go ahead and pop this piece off. You can't, it's, it plugs into the other side of this, but, uh, and you can leave that plugged in in here. But, oh, actually, huh. That actually seems even more intentional, because if you pop that off, you can even, uh, that even fits all the way in there. Although, then you still just have this hollow space that does nothing, so whatever. Anyway, to transform him, we'll go ahead and unpeg the wings here from the, uh, from the leg. And then double hinge these up, tab it on there, fold it down until that tab's in there, and same this way. Just tab them like that, fold the wings in around like that. You can leave them open, we'll show that when we get to robot mode, but flip those up like that. Flip back these, unpeg the, the arms, and bring them up on these green hinges up like this. Uh, unpeg these little pieces right here. May help if you unpeg the legs a little bit, but yeah, get these. They're untabbed there, and then the legs. 
untab the engines from the feet here. And then this panel kind of comes down, flip the foot forward, um, fold this in like that. And then this tail piece rotates up and around. And then there's a little kind of tab here into this slot, clips that up to fill in the leg. And same over here. Again, if you want to hide these wings, you can flip them back. But for robot mode, they are supposed to sit there on his wings like little Hermes-esque feet booties. Anyway, lift that up, rotate them around at the waist. The arms split, opening up this, fold the uh, this kind of around like that. This folds down, this panel folds out, flip his head up, push this around and flip this panel up and pop the nose cone into the body. Snap that down like that, fold the head up. There's a little tab here on the front of his neck piece, so make sure that locks into place. Otherwise, his head will be a little floppy. I mean, it actually stays there on pretty securely, but it will be a little floppier if you don't do that. This is where we took the targeting computer thing off of, and you just pop that right back in there. And then this whole panel folds up onto the back like that. Open up his forearms, flip out his fists. He does have movable fingers, although they're... All four of his individual fingers are one chunk. Open that up. Come on. There we go. Give him his weapons. And there is Jaxus in robot mode. And again, he's he's a very bright white. I do he's not that kind of Hasbro white, like Snapdragon, and especially Ape Face were like it's 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 definitely not that soapy plastic that uh, Ape Face was made of. It's it's a nice solid white plastic. Uh, there have been concerns, like some figures. Oh, like he's not even in. Oh, Jesus. Um. Anyway, this is where the targeting computer plugs in, in case that was down low. Jeez. Um. Anyway, here he is. Um. Jaxus. Like I said, nice solid white plastic. Some figures have been yellowing. I've seen some pictures of what appears to be Motormaster with some of his plastic kind of yellowing and browning out of the, like, brand new out of the box, which is concerning. I uh, did not have that problem with Jaxus so far. He's, he's still a nice, vibrant white. I've only had him for a couple of days, but uh, showed up just fine. And uh, just, he was, he was such a main factor in the G2 comic and they had the whole G2 toy line even though in the comic a lot of the characters didn't actually take on their G2 toy forms or if they did like Sideswipe was was black and red uh, but he had the spiked wheels that the toy didn't have. Um, Optimus looked like Optimus so I mean, I've got my G2 Optimus to show to display with him but uh, in the comics Optimus was just just looked like normal G1 Optimus. Uh, Megatron did have his G2 form but that was just because uh, he came over from G.I. Joe, where Dr. Biggles Jones had upgraded him. Anyway, <laughs> here's Jaxus. Um, he's got a ball joint at the head, his giant chin tubes, and chin and tubes. Uh, limit him down a little bit, but you can see he's actually got a pretty decent up and down, side to side range of motion. Like he doesn't end up bumping into a shoulder pylon or anything, which is nice. Um, dual hinge shoulders, bicep swivel, single hinge elbow to, a, to pass 90. Um, he does have a wrist swivel, those, those movable fingers, waist, dual joint hip, thigh swivel, and a single hinge knee but with a cutout with that thruster. Again, gives you much, gives you well past 90. Um, then you got front to back and ankle tilt on the feet, which is the way they introduced that ankle tilt is actually pretty nice. So, yeah, and again, if you, like I said, if you wanted to, the wings fold up, but if you want to have them more on display, you can leave the wings folded out to give them a little bit more. Uh, cape presence. Oh, like I mentioned earlier, you can take the guns and conceivably you could, you, if, you, if you're just carrying this one around with him, you can peg that into the back. Um, you can also use that side peg to peg into the smaller gun to then peg into the back if you want to store both his guns on his back in robot mode. You just don't want him to be holding them for whatever reason. But a very nice, fantastic representation 
of Jaxus that I, like I said, just didn't think we were ever going to get. He's got even got the G2 Decepticon logo on him. Although I don't know why he would have that in... Did he have it? I can't remember. I mean, the the storyline was these were an offshoot Cybertronians. These were the Cybertronians who left Cybertron in the four million years and basically expanded, greatly expanded the Decepticon Empire. And then with this story that like the people like Shockwave and Ratbat and everybody who had been left behind were like a token force they left to, to live on Cybertron while the full Decepticon Empire spread out. Or like not even Decepticon. They weren't even Decepticons. They were just Cybertronians. Like just fled and like were colonizing planets, turning, eradicating people. You know, bad, bad. Definitely the bad guys, but we're uh, colonizing and converting a terraforming planets to be more Cybertrons. Anyway, here he is with G2 Megatron. I mean, the new G2 Megatron, obviously not the original G1 Megatron. He'd be much larger. And with the G2 Optimus, even though, again, like I said, uh, Optimus in the comic, the Optimus that interacted with Jaxus was his more standard G1 Optimus looking self. He hadn't taken on the laser truck. But a nice addition to the G2 collection. And again, just thank you Hasbro for doing this because he's one of those characters that, like I said, if we get a repaint of him, I'm very curious to see uh, if he can not die before then. Um, what character we get out of him? Trigger Happy maybe? I'm, I'm trying to think of who we've seen listings for that could conceivably be repainted slash remolded out of this mold. And I'm sure they'll come up with something because I, I doubt they would put the extensive tooling into making a completely new mold for a character that, I mean, how many people, I mean, I don't, I don't know how well known Jaxus from the G2 comics is like certainly people my age, um, who you know got the comic when it came out and, and grew up on it might remember it. I, I just don't know how well known he is. He, he's always felt like kind of a fringe character for me. And I, and while I was disappointed. I understood why, when we did get Jax's figures, they were just... Re I don't know why they made him orange. I mean, again, orange, not super complaining, but I don't know why they didn't try to go for a more comic-accurate color scheme on some of the repaints they did. But uh, they've always been repaints of characters. So for them to invest the money into a completely new tooling for this guy makes me really happy. Anyway, G2 Universe Jaxus in Transformers Legacy uh, came in from Amazon, uh, if people who are asking... And uh, happy to have him. Like I said, he, he's definitely going to find a, uh, a a showcase place on my shelf because I'm just super excited after, geez, what, 30 years now? Almost 30 years now? Uh, to have him an actual figure of this representation of Jax's. 